pressures and full of fuel ready to go for this morning. They have to make sure the FTS system is armed and uh, ready for personnel safety just in case uh, so that the range can do that. They have to check the uh, electrical and avionics systems. They have to make sure that the uh, flight computer has all the da information it needs to place Mars 2020 into the orbit it has to. So a lot of things going on. Exciting time for the team right now, but uh, again, staying focused and following that procedure they've got. Three minutes. As we look ahead to post liftoff, I want to kind of preview for you what's going to happen because there's going to be a lot going on. You're not going to hear much from us. You'll actually be hearing from the ULA flight commentator, Jesse Gonzalez. Uh, he'll be kind of giving those calls past liftoff that will walk us through maximum dynamic pressure and into SRB separation and then into fairing separation, booster separation, and then the first main engine ignition of the Centaur, Centaur yes. uh, RL-10. And so then you'll kind of hear us jump back in and help provide some more context to what's going on. Uh, we encourage you to stay with us for the rest of the show, though. There's a ton more content we have to bring you, and we are far from over. I want to emphasize that the countdown to Mars is not done at zero today. The countdown to Mars ends in February, when Mars 2020 safely delivers perseverance and ingenuity to the surface of the red planet. So we're going to let you listen in now and enjoy the last couple minutes of the, the process of launching a rocket. One minute fifty-nine. Vehicle internal. One minute fifty-five. Launch sequencer start. One minute fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur LO two. So there we heard the fueling is is One wrapping up. 40. Yep, fueling is wrapping launch up. Uh, the team is gone. Launch enabled is done. Launch conductor sequence is ready to go. They're getting ready to turn the vehicle over to auto FTS sequence uh, at T minus 31 seconds. Um, so that's a big thing that they're getting done here. At uh, T minus 25 seconds, we will hear the team uh, give their final goes that everything is ready and One the minute launch 20. vehicle is uh, ready to lift OCU off and perform arm. this mission. SCS count started. One minute 15. Produce CCS for launch. Roger. One minute 10. Ten valves locked. One minute. Rock report range status. Range green. That's good to hear, Joshua, right that there. Public safety there is accounted for, the FTS system. Uh, there you see on your screen a beautiful shot. Uh, the skies look great. There is little wind um, happening. You'd be able to see more of the, the venting. Um, if there were wind, the trail of that, of that venting. So uh, we're yeah. ready to go. Next, that's an important seconds. point. The reason we don't see that stable venting is the three. vent valves have been locked up to put flight pressure into the tanks. And as we just heard, they're stable at step three, which means the tanks are ready to go. And uh, here at about five seconds, we will hear seconds. the team ECS reduced for launch. Give the final go. 25 seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Mars 2020. And there we go. We are ready to go lift off this morning, Joshua. Eight, seven, six, five, five, four. Engine ignition, two, one, zero. Release and lift off. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. And Atlas TU has gone to closed loop control. Coming up on 30 seconds into flight, the RD-180 is throttling down as expected. Engine response looks good. And Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And passing 45 seconds into flight, vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Passing one minute into flight, the RD-180 is throttling back up as expected. Engine response looks good. At this time in flight, the SRB chamber pressures remain nominal. The RD-180 pump speed and fuel injector pressures are responding well to demands on the engine. Standing by for SRB burnout shortly.
And we have burnout on all four SRBs. Burnout pressure signatures look good. Standing by for SRB jettison shortly. And we have a good indication of SRB jettison of all four SRBs. And the vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. Vehicle body rates are responding nominally at this time. And coming up on two and a half minutes into flight, uh, the RD-180 is throttled down slightly as expected. Engine response continues to look good. At this time, the vehicle is uh, 50 miles in altitude, uh, 85 miles downrange, traveling at 6,000 miles per hour. And the Centaur Reaction Control System is now pressurizing to flight levels. And just past three minutes into flight, the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 2.5 G acceleration limit for payload fairing jettison. Engine response and vehicle acceleration look good. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison and Centaur forward, forward load reactor deck jettison. And the RD-180 is, throttled back, is throttling back up to attain a 4.6G acceleration. Uh, engine response continues to look good. And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill-down sequence to thermally condition the RL-10 for operation. Standing by for BECO shortly. Biko is the Biko is the call for booster engine, and we have Biko booster engine cutoff standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of Atlas Centaur separation. So there you're seeing live footage, and we from have the Mach one. Uh, RL10 operating parameters look good. Uh, <clears throat> Chamber pressures are stable. This will be the first of two burns for today's mission. Uh, this first burn will pro be approximately seven minutes in length. So, Mick, that's pretty exceptional footage there. That's live video. Uh, we will see that switch over shortly into an animation that kind of helps let us know what's happening with the rocket, but right there, uh, a beautiful liftoff. Uh, fun to feel that rumble in the building here as we proceed towards uh, orbit and then towards uh, Mars destination. Yeah, absolutely. It was great uh, watching an on-time liftoff of the Atlas V with that a little over 2 million uh, pounds of thrust. Uh, cleared the tower in roughly five seconds. Uh, Josh, you and I worked the InSight mission, and if you recall, that mission on the West Coast took about 17 yeah, seconds to get past the tower. So with those four control. solids today, this thing yeah, really got out of here and on its way. And it's, uh, uh, as we hear from Jesse, everything's looking nominal, and all uh, vehicle parameters are, are within the design limits, and, and we're getting ready to come up on a main engine start for that first burn that and Jesse was talking about. See, uh, yeah, so recapping RCS this countdown to Mars, uh, uh, the stations begin to be filled up this morning just after midnight. Uh, preparations, fuelings, powering up uh, all the way through that, that liftoff that happened. Uh, I think, Mick, uh, it wasn't precisely on time. I think you said it was like 10 milliseconds early, um, so it's pretty much dead on. Yeah, dead on. This team does a great job 
job. As I said, they're very focused, very disciplined. As, as Tori also said, courageous. Uh, they have done a lot of work to get us to this point today uh, through this pandemic, changed how they did some of their work. Uh, you know, made adjustments as needed, uh, a lot of cleaning, a lot of things, a lot of wearing their face masks, uh, doing all kinds of things. And so this is an exciting time, not only for the JPL team in March 2020, but everybody that's worked this mission and for the country and the agency. So this is exciting to see. We still have a long way to go, Joshua, yes. before spacecraft separation. Yeah, we had a really quiet countdown today, which is phenomenal uh, that we got off the ground on time. And we are proceeding now that we are in the middle of the first burn. Uh, it's tough to make out, but that engine is lit and it's fire. Um, so we are in motion. There you go. There's that animation we talked about. The telemetry there as we switch to a TDRS compatible data format. Uh, TDRS overall telemetry quality is uh, very good. The space tracking system. Um, so there you go. This is not an actual video, but this is an animation that's driven by real data. So although we're not actually seeing the engine on screen right now, uh, we can see that the engine is lit, and that is driven by the data that says that the engine is truly lit, and we're in this burn. Yeah, the launch vehicle continues to send telemetry to the launch team uh, via the TDRS network, uh, as you mentioned, uh, and that allows them to continue to watch what's going on and make sure all their sequence of events uh, meet their timeline. Uh, we continue on a nominal flight this morning. Um, this uh, this first burn, as we heard earlier, will be about six minutes. This will get us into that park orbit around Earth, allow us to get uh, on our way, and then get into that approximately 30-minute coast period that we're going to have. Eight minutes into flight, uh, beginning to see the Centaur PU system balance out uh, mass errors, um, seeing very stable body rates in the Centaur. Uh, so we've mentioned five teams at play, and although if you were watching, hopefully you got a chance to see this in person, if not on camera, it's easy to kind of say, oh, it's over, like job done. But all five of these teams still very much engaged, still very much focused, because there's a lot of work ahead as we proceed through this first burn, and then a coast phase, like you mentioned, Mick, and then a second burn, and then spacecraft separation and the acquisition of signal from Mars 2020. Um, so a lot more coming up here. Mick, I know for launch services program, you guys manage the launch. Uh, so what does that mean? I mean, this is this is you guys' work in action right now. By the way, that's the fifth team that we didn't get to mention. We talked about JPL, we talked about DOE, we talked about United Space Force, uh, United States Space Force, and United Launch Alliance. Uh, LSP, we are we are like the brokers uh, to select this launch vehicle and help with manage this mission. So we, we get our spacecraft customer, the JPL folks, they come to us. They have some certain requirements that they need for this mission. The launch services program made up of engineers and flight analysis folks, and they, they look at everything, they help define those uh, requirements, and then we go out and procure a vehicle from a commercial partner. In this case, it was the Atlas 541 for the Mars 20. Uh, 20 mission that was needed for performance, right? Uh, as as I, you and I have talked over the last several days, Josh, one of the things that was important for us to look at was that performance to be able to get Mars 2020 onto that transfer orbit into solar orbit to intercept Mars in um, seven months. It's kind of analogous to a football game, right, with a, a quarterback trying to throw a pass downfield. You need a quarterback with a lot of performance who can get that ball down there where it needs to be uh, and, and uh, so the receiver can ex intercept that. In our case, seven months later. There you go. Yeah, it's the longest football pass ever. Uh, the Earth is the quarterback. The Atlas is the quarterback's arm. Perseverance is the football and Mars is the receiver. That's a good, exactly right. Uh, and what we also talked about is that technically uh, you could launch to Mars at any time if you had a rocket that was powerful enough. But this is the launch period every 26 months or so, as we've talked about, that makes the most sense because you require the least amount of energy to get to Mars uh, because it takes a lot to get there. Obviously, like the Atlas 541 is is a workhorse. Yeah, as Tor Tori said, it's their dominator. Right. There you go. They, yeah. they, they, I love that name <laughs> for the Atlas V, uh, 541. But we heard uh, Jim Bridenstine, our NASA administrator, tell us that if we didn't make this launch period, we would be down for roughly 26 yeah, it's, months, it's right? tough. So the period started July 17th and went to, and goes to August 15th. Today, July 30th, was one of those launch opportunities that we had. We had a two-hour window, and within that window, we had several opportunities. 25, actually. Yeah. 25 opportunities. And we launched at the beginning of the window on our first opportunity uh, to get Mars 2020 uh, going yep. on its way. And, and that, you know, that sounds like a, a lot, and it is. The flight analysis group, both at JPL, LSP, and ULA, did a lot of work 
to pick out those target sets and figure out where we needed to be. So they've done a great job, and we'll see how this mission continues. So, Mick, tell us about the two burns required here, and we're actually coming up on the end of the first one. Uh, ultimately, a lot of people probably, and myself included at some point, just like, why wouldn't you just keep firing the engines? Just fire all the way through and get to Mars in one shot. So the first burn gets us into that park orbit we talked about. We, we've lifted off, we've left Earth, we've got into a park orbit around Earth right now. And while we're in that uh, park orbit, we will perform some maneuvers to kind of roll uh, Mars Perseverance and the Centaur and uh, coast during that time, uh, basically setting itself up looking at the sun and away from the sun to control the thermal environments that uh, are on Mars 2020 during this coast period. That coast period will allow us to coast around uh, into the position that we need so that we can have that second firing to get the velocity needed to head off into Mars. Yes, and we will be back for that second burn in just under 30 minutes now. Uh, but for now, there's more to learn about this mission and all the amazing science that's involved.